This is a guide to what I believe to be the staple cards in Historic Brawl. Meaning, when you start building, these cards are the first to consider. Most decks will have a use for these, for they are just all around good. Removal, card advantage, ramp, win conditions, and more. Remember to remember this list the list of cards that I personally use in most Historic Brawl decks. This will be an ongoing series, so at the end of the video, if you liked or even gained anything from this video and want to see more, drop a sub. Thanks. Welcome back to another video, guys. Today we're talking about Black Historic Staples. The black cards in Historic that you should always consider before building your Historic deck. Now, some of these cards, there's a lot of in these categories. As you can see, the first row is just removal. There's a lot of removal. Black does removal so well. But black does a couple of things well. Black also um, draws cards very well. And it also does hand disruption very well, which we haven't seen in any of the other, of the other colors. And we don't really see in any of the, of the other colors. Um, first, we'll go into the hand disruption. And then we'll start going around and, and looking at the other stuff. And I have a long list of notables in black because black just has so many good cards that are hard to just overlook. But let's start with our hand disruption. That's cards like Duress. They reveal their hand, you choose a card. Or just make them discard, but this, in this case, it's the rest. You, they reveal, you choose a non-creature, non-land, they discard it. You get to pick something nice. This is card hand disruption. You take out stuff that might be immediate threats, something that you might not want to deal with at all. Get to it before your removal has to. Or get to something that your removal can't get to. Like an artifact or... Um, I think that's pretty much the only thing black can't remove is artifacts. Has removal for pretty much everything else. Then we have Inquisition and Kozilek return. A target player reveals their hand, choose a non-land card from it with mana value 3 or less. They discard. A little better than Thoughtseize, but... I mean, a little better than Duress, but not as good as Thoughtseize. Tar player reveals their hand, you choose any card that's not a land. They discard it, but you lose 2 life because you're picking any card you want. So, really, really good. Um, those 3 1-drops are, are pretty much always top of my mind do i want a lot of hand disruption if i do i'll probably run all three if i don't i might just go with just thought seize i might go with thought seize inquisition if i had it i don't have inquisition right now so i'll probably go thought seize the rest then we got kite sail he's a, a body one two flyer that also does the same thing you look at their hand choose a non-creature non-land card just like the rest but this time it gets exiled with him and then whenever he dies they get the card back a lot of times you want to get like a removal spell so they're not just like killing him right after you do it anyway or you want to make him waste a removal spell on it. So, I mean, he's, he's really good. Um, Yerox Fenlurker. When he enters, they ex exile a card from their hand. Now, this can be any card. If they have one card left in their hand, it has to be that card. You know, they can pick a land, whatever they want to pick, but it gets exiled. So they can't um, go back to it in their graveyard or anything. Davriel, Rogue Shadow Mage. On top of the fact that he discards a card from their hand, he also punishes them if they don't have enough cards in hand. Um, if they do one or fewer cards in hand, he does two damage to them. Kind of like the rack back in the day. Then we got Palaka Predation. Now this is just a pretty basic hand disruption. It's not nothing special for three mana, but it, it does double as a land, so it makes it worthwhile putting in this uh, list of cards to consider. And there's a lot of cards like this. Some of them aren't legal, but this is one that I definitely would... Um, would probably run in most things, especially if you know the format very well. If you know the format very well, you know what cards are always in decks that they they really, really want all the time. You can just erase that card from their deck. Super good card. You choose a non-artifact, non-land card from um, name. Search their hand. Graveyard library for any number. It'll always be one because it's commander, but then um, they get to draw a card for each card you remove from their hand that way. If you're already using duress and stuff like that, you might be able to see a card that you want to get rid of that's in their hand. So, really, really good. Now, one thing black doesn't do well is ramp. It doesn't have a lot of ways to add mana. But we do have Forsworn Paladin, new card from um, one of the newer sets, but he's so good. He makes treasure tokens, but he also pumps up your other, mon your other creatures. So, you can make your other creatures stronger with him, but more importantly, he makes treasure tokens. Then we have Black Market. When a creature dies, put a charge counter on it at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. Add a black mana for each counter on Black Market. This is an OG, super powerful black ramp card. Um, you're not going to get a lot of ramp. This is all we got. So um, consider these guys every time you're building black. They're super good. Otherwise, you're going to have to go into the artifacts and colorless cards. We'll, we'll use things like mana rocks and stuff like that. But outside of that... 
we have card draw. Let's do card draw. We'll do removal last. We'll, we'll do removal next. Because then we're going to do just our notable stuff. But um, card draw, village rights. Super good card. If they're about to kill something, you can just said, sack it to draw cards. You can steal something of theirs, sack it to draw cards. Has a lot of utility. Um, sign in blood. Draw two cards, lose two life for two black. Just a purely decent black draw spell. Egon, God of Death, which I'm not putting him in here for Egon. We're putting this in here for Throne of Death. Beginning your upkeep, mill a card, exile a creature card from your graveyard, pay two and a black, tap it, exile a creature card from your graveyard, draw a card. If you're not playing heavy creatures, might not be very good, but if you're playing anything that wants you to get cards in your graveyard, still super good. So I put it on this list because it has a lot of utility. Morbid Opportunist. Um, even if you're not playing a lot of creatures, this guy's really good. When one or more other creatures die, draw a card. Not just yours. So if you're playing a lot of removal, he's still really good to have in your deck for when you kill uh, uh, another creature. Grim Tutor. Search for your library for a card and put that card into your hand. And then shuffle. Lose three. Search for any card. I mean, card advantage at its purest. Anything you need, you can just go get it. Um, Phyrexian Arena, every upkeep you lose a life and draw a card. There's lots of arena effects in black. I just wanted to put just the original. Um, there's a lot of effects that you can look at the top card and take damage from. I just think arena is so pure and clean and just cut and dry. It's a really good card. And then Liliana. Liliana is a great planeswalker. She could be in a bunch of categories. She has token generation. She can make each player stack two creatures. Or uh, destroy almost all the permanents on the board on your opponent's side of the field. So, I mean... Really good card, but most importantly, when a creature you control dies, draw a card. So that gives you more card draw. Now we come to the removal. There's a lot of the removal. We got single card removal and multi card removal. All, all creature removal, mostly. There's a little bit of enchantment removal black has, but mostly uh, creature removal. We got in the one drop slots, we have Blood Chief Stir, super good. Dead Weight and Fatal Push. All three really, really powerful one-drop removal spells. If you want any one-drop removal, I'd, I'd probably go with Fatal Push first, but they're all real good. Then we got Chainer's Edict. Target player sacks a creature with flashback, so you could do it again, which makes this card, I mean, if it didn't have flashback, probably wouldn't be that great. There's a lot of effects like this, but because of the flashback, you can do it twice. The recursion makes it worth it. Epic Downfall. I, I don't... This card is so good. The fact that it's a sorcery sucks, but beyond that... Exile target creature with mana value three or greater. So you get to answer the Heliod, you get to answer any of them undestructibles, any of them um, really, really big guys that just come out real fast. Turn two, you can answer it. Feed the Swarm. Now, this is where we get some enchantment removal. You can destroy target creature or enchantment, and then you lose life to that permanent uh, mana value. If you're not playing any other colors like white or green, you might need this. So, something to consider. Uh, Infernal Grasp, another new card that I really, really love. Destroy target creature, you lose two life. So good. Two mana and an instant spell. Legion's End, when we were talking about white, there's a similar card. Um, exile target creature and opponent controls mana value two or less, and all other creatures that player controls with the same name. Then they reveal their hand and exiles all cards of that name from their hand in graveyard. So good. <coughs> Grasp of Darkness. Again, you can answer things that are indestructible. Um, just minus four, minus four, two mana, really good instant speed. Elspeth's Nightmare. It, now this fits in multiple categories, but you destroy a creature, then you get to look at their hand and discard a card, then you get to exile their graveyard. Three things you, you just want to be doing, so pretty clutch card to have. Um, Farika's Lib Libation. Don't know how to say that, but um, target opponent sacrifices a creature, or they sacrifice an enchantment. Some more enchantment removal, so just because of that, I thought this felt... Um, it, I felt this earned its place in this list. Plague Crafter again. This says multiple things. If they don't, if they don't have a creature or planeswalker to sack when it enters, they have to discard a card. So it can fit in multiple different uh, areas here. We got Murderous Rider. Destroys a creature or planeswalker. You lose two life, but also he he can be recast as a creature with lifelink to make up for that life. The recursion super good. Um, poison the cup. You can foretell it. Destroy target creature and scry two if it was foretold. So if you don't have the mana, you're hurting for mana a little bit. This card can still be if you just have a couple mana. It just fits in where you need it to fit in. Um, eat to extinction. Exile target creature or planeswalker. 
Then you get to look at the top card of your library and you can put it in your graveyard if you want. Um, extinction event is supposed to be here. Um, Hagra Mauling costs one less for each. Uh, costs one less to cast if they control uh, no basic lands, which could happen, especially early in the game, whenever you'd want it to cost less. But on top of that, it doubles as a land. Frasca's Contempt, Exile, Creature, or Planeswalker. Keyword Exile here. Also, you gain two life. Instant speed. Um, Phyrexian Obliterator. So good. Um, this could be in the next row, but because it's just so good, whenever um, any source deals damage to him, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. 5-5, five, five, Trample for 4. This powerful card. Um, Eldest Reborn. Again, another card that does multiple things. They sack a creature or planeswalker, they discard a card, and then you get to reanimate something from any graveyard, right? Um, from a graveyard. So you can take something that you already just made them kill if you're not running a lot of creatures. You're not running reanimate strategy. This could still be good because you can take their stuff. And then Erebos Intervention. So, so good. You get to kill them indestructible creatures. You get to gain life. Or you can just exile a bunch of cards that they're trying to target in their graveyard before they get to use them. I'd say Erebos Intervention is one of my favorite ones on the list. Also, one of the ones that's probably played way less than it should be. Now, next we have like group destruction, so things that will kill multiple things, wrath type spells. We have Cry, Cry of the Carnarium, stuff like that. Pest, Pestilence Haze, really good one. All creatures minus two, minus two, um, which is Vengeance, creatures of the chosen type. Get minus three, minus three. And then there's the opposite of that one, Crippling Fear. Choose a creature type. Creatures that aren't that type get minus three, minus three. We have Extinction Event. Choose Outer Even. Destroy all uh, creatures with the chosen type of mana cost. Languish, minus four, minus four. Hitting them indestructibles because of the minus. Phyrexian Scriptures. Um, first, it pumps up one of your creatures, turns it to an artifact, then destroys all non-artifact creatures. Again, you can build around this card, have a lot of heavy artifact deck, but you can also just run it. It's just a powerful board wipe. Um, and then on top of that, it exiles their graveyard. And then we have Crux of Fate, destroy all dragons or all non-dragons. I play this one a lot. You don't see a lot of dragons that it matters. We see Massacre Girl. When she enters, each other creature gets minus one, minus one until end of this turn. When a creature dies this turn, each other creature other than her gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So it can keep on stacking. If they have a one drop, if they have a one, one, a two, two, and a three, three, it comes out, kills the one, one, triggers. Again, kills the 2-2, two, two, triggers again, kills the 3-3, three, three, and goes on and on just like that. Um, and if multiple creature, multiple 1-1s one, die, say they have three 1-1s one, and a 4-4, four, four, after all three of those die, it'll trigger three, uh, three more times and, and kill the 4-4 four, four, too. So, I mean, it, it's just a really, really good card. And again, kills those indestructible creatures. Um, Massacre Worm hits everything from minus 2, minus 2. On top of that is the body that it can attack. And when a creature and opponent dies, that player loses life. So you get that on top of it. You can come in and just... You can win the game with this guy if they have enough tokens out or something like that. Finale of Eternity, another card I play a lot. Destroy up to three target creatures with toughness X or less. It's X and two black. If X is ten or more, return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So on top of that, you get this boosted effect from it. It's just so powerful. And then the Meat Hook Massacre. New card, super good. I love it a lot. Love it, love it, love it a lot. Um, when the Meat Hook Massacre enters the battlefield, each creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. When a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. And when a creature an opponent controls dies, you gain a life. All these are good. Um, based on what you're playing, you'll want to pick not all of these, obviously, but definitely a nice selection of them. Now, my favorite part of these videos, just the... the Honorable mentions that didn't really make it into one of these categories. We got Malakir Rebirth. Maybe the least staple card in this list, but because it's a land and it has such a good effect, it's it's really good to just consider replacing one of your swamps with it. Phyrexian Reclamation. Another card I did not know existed in MTG Arena until after I built this list. I'm about to go back and put this in a bunch of decks. I mean... So good. Vorpal Sword, basic equipment, but with the ability, if you have the 8 mana and you're going to be swinging in and getting that damage directly, you can win the game off it. Dread Horde Invasion, just constant got zombie tokens, building up this one zombie token until eventually maybe has lifelink. It can be hard to deal with. People like to destroy that card because it's very good.
Ghoulish Procession. Again, another card just gives you tokens. If you're not playing a creature deck, if you are playing a creature deck, this card is just really good because you, you're going to be killing creatures. Um, Jadar, Ghoul Caller of Nephalia. Again, you don't need a creature deck to run them, but if you are running one, it's really good. He just makes sure that you have that zombie every turn. If you're playing something that sacrifices tokens, he's going to give you something new to sacrifice every turn. So, Pack Rat, Pack Rat, Pack Rat. Oh my god, he's so good. He just wins games. If you if you get a chance to get Pack Rat big enough, he's just so hard to deal with, and then he just wins. He's overruns. So good. Um, graveyard Trespasser. Some, this is some like Graveyard Hate. He comes in, exiles cards from Graveyards, then eventually he exiles two cards from Graveyards and gains you some life off it if you flip them. Has Ward for discard a card. And really, really good. 3-3 three, three for 3. <laughs> um, this guy, again, he, he might not be great in every deck, but I just I seem to run him all the time. He's so good. Not that big a deal switching all your swamps out for snowlands or all your basics for snowlands and just gets card advantage. So he could even go in this list, I guess, but we're not going to put him in there because he doesn't exactly draw cards. We have Rankle, who fits in so many lists. It could fit in the discard list. It could fit in the um, removal list. It could fit in the... Um, what's it called? <laughs> the, the, the card draw, the card advantage list. Uh, Rankle's so good. Haste, 4-4, four, 3-3... Four, three, three. Haste four mana three three with flying and haste. I mean it's so good. You get to choose one of its abilities. It's kind of like a planeswalker, but not. It has so many abilities. Um, Revel and riches, just a win con. You can just have this out, and as long as you're killing things slowly, eventually you're gonna win. Build on it. Build on top of it. Have other things that synergize with it. You can just win so fast. Um, Terrigrid, God of Fright, super good card. Maybe your commander might be your commander in a mono black deck. Really good, but I have it, this card in this list for the Lantern, just because all your extra mana can go into punishing them. Okay, tap it, they lose three life, or they sacrifice a non-land permanent, or they discard a card. Any one, they get to choose. And then, oh, I got eight extra mana. Let's do it two more times. Let's do it, I got 12 more mana, let's do it three more times. Let's just make sure we don't have any extra mana. Having cards that do that, super important, and they punish so much. This this card's so good. Um, Bolus is Citadel, late game, I mean... It's a late game card. You don't see it till like turn six. You can't really get it out, but just gives you so much card advantage. Again, it could go into this list, but it's just so good. Play cards at the top of your deck, and then sacrifice ten nine land permanents. Each opponent loses ten life. So on top of it, it gives you that option. And then we got Agadim's Awakening, just a land. It can come into play on tap if you want to pay the life. So that alone makes it good. Then it has the ability on top. Return from your graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creatures that each have a different mana value, X or less. So you can pay five and three black. You get a one drop, a two drop, a three drop, a four drop, a five drop, all back on the field. And it's just an extra land in your deck. Speaking of lands, let's go to our lands. We have Baron Moor. We have Bajuka Bog. Cabal Stronghold. Castle Loxwain, Desert Glorified for the Cycling, Hive of the Eye Tyrant, just because it's a man land. It's not the best one, but it's still a man land. Probably want to run it, Thriving more Witch's Cottage, get some creatures back from your graveyard. Um, let's just go through these, Cycling, um, Exile all cards from a graveyard, just having that, just so good. Um, add a black for each swamp you control after turn three and a mono black. This is just obvious value. Um, Castle Loxwain, card draw. And, uh, yeah, that's it. These are the black cards I say you got to look at before building your historic Brawl deck. There might be some I'm missing, though. So if I am, feel free to put them in the comments below. If you like this video and you want to see more videos about the staples in historic or just more MTG content, feel free to hit the subscribe button. I also have another video coming out right after this one where I play one of my historic decks. If you guys want to see that, it'll be about an hour long of just footage of me playing five rounds with one of the decks I built using these principles and, and these staple cards. So thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.